From Mamma Mia, I'm Mia Friedman, and you're listening to a bonus episode of No Filter. It's kind of part bonus, part update, part a question I forgot to ask my guest this week when he came in to record our original interview. I spoke to John Edward this week on the show. He's a psychic and a medium. And as you learn, if you listen to that episode, over the last three decades, he's helped thousands of people communicate with loved ones who've crossed over to the other side. But after I finished my time with John, we went over time, we went way over time actually. He was here with his daughter who, who was waiting outside with his publicist and we got so engrossed in our conversation that she ended up, this has never happened before, he, she just came into the podcast studio and said, we've really got to go. And so John left and afterwards I realised that I had missed a really important question that I wanted to ask him. And that is, I wanted to ask him, what about lost babies? What about the pregnancies that don't go to term or the babies that are stillborn? Do they ever come through? Now, of course, you're going to have to suspend disbelief if you're not into any of this. This is not the episode or the bonus episode for you. But I know as someone who has lost a pregnancy, it's something that I've thought about a lot. And I know that other women who've been through it say the same thing. We wonder if the energy of those little lost souls are around us or what happens to them. And I had questions. Are they still with us? Do they ever come through when John does his readings? And can he sense their energy around us somehow? I knew that there would be so many women who, like me, were really curious to hear what John has to say about this. So we reached out to see if he had time to speak to me just really quickly about this one important thing. And even though he was on holidays here in Australia with his kids, he was gracious enough to give me a bit more time. So he sent through his number and I called him up while he was driving along the Great Ocean Road in Victoria for a conversation that might make you a little teary. Hey, thanks for giving me another couple of minutes. I just had an important question that I didn't get a chance to ask you and that is about miscarriage sure. and pregnancy loss and babies that are stillborn. Does their energy ever come through when you're reading people? You have to add one more in there before I answer that, and that's the terminated pregnancy, and the answer is yes. So those energies are like the moon. They kind of satellite the earth. Those energies satellite the family members and friends that they're connected to. So if I was to read for someone and I say, oh, you have four children, and they say, no, I have three, I know to say that there's one that's unaccounted for. Now that one that's unaccounted for could have been a miscarriage or a terminated pregnancy. And depending upon the person, it could be one that's on the way. So those energies are definitely part of the spiritual family and they can come through. The problem in my experience, philosophy wise, my own practice is that they don't have a lot of life experience. So because they don't have a lot of life experience, mm. there's not a lot that they can validate. So usually it's somebody else that does the validation for them 99% of the time. What does that mean? But then there are a few outliers where, well, if there's a, a child that's passed and that child was very, very young, let's say they're two years or younger, there's not a lot of life experience for them to come through with as far as what they've done or what they did or what their experiences were. So unless we're talking about a child who most of their life was sick, who can talk about the experiences of being sick, um, that energy doesn't have, have a lot of accomplishments or life experiences. So normally it'll be somebody else that comes through with the child that can kind of update the family that it is that child that's coming through. I had an energy that was like seven weeks in utero that passed. Mom was pregnant, didn't know she was pregnant, had surgery, and during the surgery, the pregnancy was interrupted. And as a result of the pregnancy being interrupted, she felt guilty because she didn't even know she was pregnant. So that child came through to that mom, trying to help assuage and alleviate her feelings of not knowing that she was pregnant. That's so interesting because, uh, of course, with miscarriages and pregnancy loss and, and stillbirth, there's a weird type of grief because you're grieving someone that you have no memories of and that you didn't really get a chance to meet in many cases, particularly with miscarriage. So does the energy feel when it comes through, does, does that energy stay around us as the mothers of these? Oh, yeah, that energy, that energy definitely stays. I mean, I've read for people that were in their 60s and their 70s, and I'll say to them, you know, you have three kids, and they say, no, I only have two. 
and I still account that other pregnancy, that other energy, and that other energy can come through. So if that two-year-old that passed, if that stillborn, that stillbirth child that passed, you know, passed 69 years ago, I might see that as a 69-year-old energy. Say, did you lose a son that was 60? Oh. So they could age, they could age themselves to the age that they would be here. But when we talk about grief and the loss of that individual, it's as significant for people because it's like building a house. When people build a house, not only do they have the blueprints, not only do they imagine how they're going to decorate it, but they imagine what's going to take place in the house. So then all of a sudden, the, the, the land, the house, the blueprints, and that opportunity seemingly are gone. So they're mourning what could be, as well as what the experience is, the physicality of the loss. You mentioned um, terminated pregnancies, which which I hadn't even thought of. Do they come through as angry? Nope. They do not come through as angry because one of the things that we can't do, the science teaches that, that you know, energy can't be created nor destroyed. So really, when we're talking about a pregnancy that's terminated, that energy is still part of the family. And I use the analogy of if you're, if you're buying a new car, if you're getting a new car, when does that person who's going to drive that car get into that vehicle to drive it? Do they go sit in the factory and sit in the car while they're putting on the doors and the tires and the steering column? They don't. They wait for that car to be delivered. Once the car is delivered, then they could drive it off the lot. So energetically, they are tethered to the order. They're tethered to the experience of coming into that family, which, by the way, that mom and dad need to go through that experience of, understanding the concept of extending their family, understanding the concept of responsibility for family, understanding the concept of loss when it comes to making that decision to not have that child or what does that actually mean. But that just means that that energy is going to find another way in. When you say find another way in, do you mean reincarnation? I, I mean finding another vehicle to get in. So it, it would be finding an incarnation but yes you could say reincarnation as well because i believe that it's cyclical and we can we come back so it's like getting it's like you think you're being admitted to the university of you know sydney and then all of a sudden they say nope that thing right so you thought you were going to sydney that's, uni that's and then it, it's like no right. you're going to melbourne uni correct so that soul is still going to get the education at the end it's still going to find the the right dynamic because that soul is coming in to learn lessons. So if that soul is coming in to learn specific lessons, if that set of parents isn't going to be able to accommodate it, then it's going to find another set of parents that it's going to be able to, to do that lesson. And by the way, it's going to find it in a, in a relatively close period of time, proximity, date, and time as well, so that it has the astrological natal chart, which is the blueprint for that lifetime to help give that child an understanding of like the blueprint and the mapping of what's to come. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. And so then you know how you say when you're reading people and you see energy and you see it as a series of images and, and how you interpret it, it, you said that, that if someone lost a pregnancy 60 years ago, it will feel like a 60 year old energy, but it will sort of not be able to tell you much because it, never got to experience life with that person. Is that right? That is, that's correct. In my, in, in my practice, I can say to you, 99% of the time, that's the experience that I've had, where people, you know, they don't have the ability to come through. Um, but I've had kids that are like five years old, and now it's been 20 years later, um, and they'll come through and they'll age themselves appropriate. And I won't know that they lost a five-year-old, like, for example, I have a woman that was in Albany, New York, and her dad came through for her. And her dad came through talking about having six-year-olds with her, with him. And she said, there are no six-year-olds that, that pass. And I said, no, he's telling me he has a six-year-old with him. And you know, we went back and forth, and I could be pretty persistent. And she was as, as persistent in her resistance of what I was saying. Mm. And then I kind of, like, moved on. And then at the end, she said, can I ask you a question? I go, you can ask me anything you like. She said, I miscarried twins because what happens with miscarriages? So I already knew the answer. So I just waited and I said, how long ago? 
And she did the math in her head and she was like, oh, about six years ago. Oh my God, six years ago, six years ago. <laughs> so her dad answered her question before she could answer it, letting her know that he had the six-year-olds with him. Now, they, clearly they weren't six when she miscarried. You know, she was a few months. But they would have been six years old if they were still here. So they came through at six years old. Right. So they st- those energies stay with us and yet they, they age at the same time. Correct. But yep. there's no physical body. So no. they age themselves. There's no physical body. So they age themselves more for us to recognize that it's actually them. Right. My girlfriend and I, um, she had a stillbirth and I had a late-term miscarriage and we, we talk about our daughters kind of hanging out together as teenagers, which they would be now. And it's funny, we've both got a really strong yep. sense of them being teenage girls, not babies anymore. Yep. And is that why? Because well, their the, energy is older. Because their, their energy would come through as to how they would portray themselves to you if they were here. <sighs> what I found really interesting, and this is how my, my brain works, is when that woman... Um, had the surgery and she basically lost, you know, the pregnancy was interrupted because of the surgery. She was only seven weeks and her daughter came through loud and clear and very precocious. And I thought she was, I thought she was seven years old and she gave me her name. So at the end of the reading, and I only found this out because I made a joke at the end of the reading. I said to the woman, huh, you had a pretty precocious seven year old. And she raised her eyebrow and she goes, my daughter wasn't seven. And she was very young. And I looked at her and I was like, 17? You know, and she looked at me like, no, dude, I can't have a 17-year-old. I'm too young for that. <laughs> I was like, how old was your daughter? And she goes, I was seven weeks pregnant. Now, I didn't just go to the place of, oh, my God, that's amazing. I started going to the healthcare place of, one, you didn't know you were pregnant. Two, seven weeks, you wouldn't know if you're having a boy or a girl. And three, how would you know what to name it? That's, that's why I went to the skeptical yeah. place. And she said to me, well, she had a dream that it was her daughter, and she named it. And that's the name that I got. I got the name. So her daughter came through her in the visit and she had a name and that's the name that came through. So the bond between mother and child, both in utero and out, is very much that, a bond. That's so comforting to know that those little energies are with us in, in some form that I know is going to be of a huge comfort to so many women listening to this. John, thank you so much. I just really appreciate you taking the extra time. Oh, my time. pleasure. Thank you. for. Yeah, I really... I enjoyed our chat, so thank you for having me. Oh, so much to unpack in that episode. Everyone who I've told about that conversation since I had it a week or so ago has said that even the thought of it gives them goosebumps. My friend Beck Sparrow, who was the first person that I told, I quickly WhatsApped her after I got off the phone with John, She and I often talk about how our daughters organised for us to meet. We were connected by mutual friends after Beck's daughter, Georgie, was stillborn. And some friends we have in common knew that I'd been through something similar and and connected us up in the hope that I could maybe help Beck through that really difficult time. And what he said made so much sense to us. The way we think about the little girls we lost because we find ourselves talking about them as if they're teenagers because that's what they would be by now. We don't think of them as little babies anymore. And that kind of gave me chills when he said that because I wondered if that was just us sort of making up a story in our head and, you know, maybe we are making a story up in our head. But uh, it just really correlated with, with what he said about the ages and the energies of those babies we never got to take home, we never got to hold in our arms. To listen to the full episode of No Filter, my my full interview with John, where we talk about lots and lots of other things, if you haven't heard it already, scroll back in this feed or search John Edward No Filter in your podcast app. We've also popped some links to that original episode in our show notes. No Filter is produced by Eliza Ratliff and I'm Mia Friedman. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Mia Friedman or you can sign up for my newsletter at miafriedman.com.au. I'll see you on Mamma Mia.